Usually what people think of when they think of crocheting is maybe their grandmother who would maybe sit and crochet a scarf or a hat. Afghans, blankets, something that is cool, but you know, it's not necessarily revolutionary. I've actually never made a hat or a scarf in my life. As long as I can remember, I have battled with anxiety and depression. It comes in waves. I will have good months and I will have bad months and that is still how it is to this day. So it was the winter of 2017. I had kind of like a traumatic experience happen and I ended up in the hospital just for some mental illness reasons. And when I got out of the hospital, I kind of wanted to find something that was gonna help me get myself out of my head, kind of slow down my thoughts. Critics of graffiti in general might call it vandalism, but admirers call this street art. Michelle Miller shows us a fuzzier art form called yarn bombing that's being stitched across the world. I remember I was watching TV and the TV cut to this girl in Brooklyn and she was yarn bombing and I'd never seen anything like it. My whole life I've loved art and since I was little I wanted to be an artist. I've always loved mixed media but I've never found my medium. So I remember the next day I went on YouTube and I just started like looking up the basics of how to crochet. Then you're going to pull downwards and pull through the loop on your hook. And for the next two weeks I was just like enthralled with learning how to crochet. So I taught myself off of YouTube. It helps with anxiety, depression, and I knew that it combined my love for texture and color. My mind is constantly racing with thoughts. But with crochet, it is a lot of counting, repetition, numbers. Um, you have to actually focus and you're moving your hands. So uh, while my mind still does wander, if I find it wandering, I can literally come back to counting. And so I'll just one, two, three, and you start over. And this cycle kind of continues over and over again. And you can be just like counting, counting. One, 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 two, two, one, one, two. And while it sounds maybe a little bit boring, for someone like me when my mind is never stopping, it is like a little bit of like a moment of clarity. One, 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 two, three, Four, five, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. It's my work practice, it's my spiritual practice, it's it's my medication. It's like all of these things in one that you wouldn't think when you just see some yarn, which is really cool. While I was learning to crochet, I was also researching street art and just becoming in awe of this art form that I've seen before but maybe never really appreciated as much as I do now. It's prevalent everywhere, but if you're not taking the time to look up from your phone or stop, you miss it. I mean, especially being in Philadelphia, the streets are like an outdoor museum if you really stop and take the time and look around. I realize that I never will be or never really want to be a gallery painter or a gallery artist. So I thought, why not bring my art to the streets and create an outdoor gallery? I am really good at creating pieces that resonate with people in a new way. So I started doing a lot of stuff revolving around mental health. And I put up a piece and it was three large crocheted flowers. And it was a dying flower, a flower that was growing a little bit, and a flower that was blooming. And I wrote, it gets better on it. And that was a piece, almost like a turning point piece, that people were really interacting with, saying how much it meant to them, that it was like a little hidden oasis in the busy street. Um, and they would stop, and I'd never seen anything like it really. 
So I started thinking what kind of motifs and what kind of pieces of art can I make that are going to make an impact. It's kind of expanded into me being able to go to the streets and use crochet as activism and there's actually a term for it called craftivism which I really enjoy and I think it's such a fun word to say. We are currently on South Street in South Philadelphia and we are going to install a piece. It's a little play on words and kind of uh, a little thank you to Philly and everyone in the community who's really been kind of stepping up um, during these crazy times. So I'm going to be installing a couple crocheted pieces of sushi and I have a bunch of Philly rolls, which is the popular sushi here in Philadelphia. And it says Philly rolls with it. It's kind of just saying like, we are taking this kind of bad hand that we've been given lately and we are making the most of it. I just wanted to make it light and whimsical and you'll see that there's the sushi are a bunch of bright colors, but also a message for Philly to keep it up and keep up the good work and not to stop uh, fighting for what we believe in. Color is my favorite part of art and crocheting and of life, I think. A lot of times when I'm putting up a piece outside, people will say, oh, did you just make this right now while you were outside? And absolutely not. My pieces, I, I create them at home and I install them on the street. So I will spend anywhere from an hour to 40 hours at home making a free piece of art for the street that might not last more than 24 hours. The best days are when I start to create a piece that, all right, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but as I'm starting to make it, sometimes I just smile or I'll laugh to myself. I'm like, I'm funny. Like, that really energizes me. So when I'm able to actually get up and be a person, which I can't always be every day because of my mental illness, those days I really treasure. My art helps beautify the community and I'm okay with it being temporary because everything is temporary. And that, it just really doesn't bother me. My art form really reminds you to be present in the moment, that you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. And uh, I think that that is the beauty of it because it's kind of, it's kind of like a life philosophy.